Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the first live daily show on photography on Facebook. Every weekday, 9.30 a.m., right here at facebook.com slash photojoseph. Oh, I think I actually got that whole thing right this time. Wow, amazing. So good morning for those of you who are rapidly tuning in live. As always, if you have any questions or comments, throw them out into the live chat so we can do that. If you're watching this on YouTube later, put them in the comments there. Today's video, look like everything's live, we're looking good. Today's video is about this guy here. So as I had mentioned earlier, courtesy of my new friends at b &H, I have a little partnership with them. They're, can, they're gonna be able to send me out toys that I want to play with and show off online and, um, and uh, unbox, review, that sort of thing so that you guys can learn all about them. And this is, a, now I'm not gonna just, you know, grab any old random thing, things that I would use that I want to use, maybe I'm thinking of buying and so on. So this is one of today's, one of those, one of those opportunities. This is the Blackmagic Micro Studio Camera 4K. Now look, I realize that this is absolutely not something that the vast majority of you are going to go out and buy. This is a very specific camera, but for those of you who are, who are interested in something like this, well, hopefully this will, you'll learn something here. Uh, and for those who aren't, it's just one of those, it's kind of interesting to see what happens on the other side of production. Why not, right? So the idea here, all we're going to do today is an unboxing. I will be implementing this into this actual live production and we'll continue to talk about it there. But I figured it's kind of hard for me to show it to you when it's when it's what you're looking through at me. So we'd start with an unboxing today and then we'll get into some details later on. So what is this thing? Well, it is, it's a camera, but it's specifically for shooting video and it is primarily designed for live production, exactly what we're doing here. On a any normal camera, mirrorless, DSLR, whatever, you've got a series of parts. You have a lens, you have a sensor, you have some type of recording media, you know, micro SD card or whatever it is, CF card, and viewfinder slash LCD. This device removes the viewfinder and the LCD. It removes the recording media. This just is a sensor for you to attach the lens to. That's basically what it is. Now it's got a lot of controls in it that are designed to be controlled remotely, which is where this gets really, really interesting for live production. So for example, I can change exposure, I can change um, color balance, and with the right lens, which I have two of right here, so we'll take a look at those in a moment, I can also change the zoom. And I can do all of that through my software controller for the Blackmagic A10 switcher, which is sitting up above us here. So why, Am I interested in this instead of using what I'm using right now, which is a Lumix GH4? Well, a couple of reasons. The compatibility between the Lumix GH4 and the Blackmagic are not 100%. There are issues when I try to record in 4K, which I actually do more of than you, you might think. Um, this show is in HD, but I do a lot of other production in 4K and I have to reroute things because I can't rely on the switcher in 4K. It just does, does weird things with this camera. Also, I kind of want to get that camera out of there because that GH4 is one of two that I have that I use in real world production in outside production, so I'm not shooting. And I'd like to get it out from behind there because whenever I need that second camera, I have to take this whole thing apart and that sucks. So two reasons for that. Um, and then of course the zoom thing, the powered zoom. I don't know yet if I can program zooms because um, I have, and as I think I've shown you before, I've got a whole switching panel here that allows me to access macros that I set up to do things like switch from, you know, one source to another, right? So when I switch, for example, over here, I can switch to my Mac. That is a shortcut. Switch back to the main camera. Um, I can do the picture in picture thing. These are all macros that are built into my setup here. And what I don't know is if I can program a zoom into that. And that would be really, really cool if I can. So we're gonna, we'll find that out eventually. We won't find that out today, but we'll get there eventually. So for now, let's just see what is in the box of this Blackmagic Micro Studio Camera 4K. Again, courtesy of b &H. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate sending this out. Now, I don't get to keep it. I do have to send this back or buy it, which I am probably going to do, frankly. Uh, but let's see. So what do we get in ye old unboxing? So as expected, <laughs> camera's tiny. This is a, it, you know, I should have set up a close-up camera today. I didn't do that, sorry. Um, but this is a teeny tiny little camera. So you've got three tripod sockets on the bottom for attaching accessories and one on the top. So you can mount this in any number of ways. HDMI out, the expansion port out. And this is quite interesting. So you've got an expansion port here. And then, so in the box, we have a little welcome thing in typical Blackmagic style. And I think this is because they're an Australian company. They're an international company. They understand, well, international compared to US, 
they understand that not the whole world does not use the same plugs. So all of their products come with a variety of power adapters, which thank you, Blackmagic. That is a very, very cool thing. Um, and with that expansion port goes to this guy here. So wiggle this thing out of here. That's power. Oh, it's all tucked underneath. Let's get that out of there. Um, there we go. That expansion port goes to this, which has, let's see, full-size SDI. Oh, reference. That's a time code reference in. And then it's got a um, LENC controller. It's got a serial bus. Wow, that's interesting. I think the whole idea behind this is you can actually create, because this is a standard, what is that, RS422? I think that's right. I don't remember. Anyway, it's a standard port on here. You can actually design your own cables. That's a big part of what people can do with this. Anyway, and then it's, what are the others? It has, um, what does that say? PTZ control, I don't even know what the heck that is, and B4 lens control, uh, which I don't need. I think that is for different types of broadcast lenses. Anyway, so you got that power supply in there and battery, standard Canon battery. Thanks for including one, Blackmagic. That's another thing. I guess at this price it should, but um, very nice to have that included in there. So let's go back to looking at the camera. Um, oh, and the battery obviously means that you don't have to have this on power, so you can put this in a more remote location. Now, given that you need to still tether this to other things to record to, you'd still have a kit, but you can shoot with this in the field if you needed to. One of the keys on here, so on this side, you have SDI in and SDI out, and this is, mi good Lord, everything's ringing. Um, you have mini, these are mini SDIs. Is it even smaller than mini? I think it's just standard mini SDI. And as I understand it, and I haven't hooked it up yet, obviously, as I understand it, uh, obviously the SDI out is going to send the signal to the switcher, but I need to bring the program back. So I'm gonna have to run two SDI cables to this to give me control over the lens. But that is the entire camera. So no sensor, no recording media, HDMI out, SDI in and out. It has a, a headphone and a mic port on it, although audio will likely come in over the SDI if you were even sending audio through here. In this setup, I will not be. Right, this will send video. My audio is going through a mixing board that's going to be plugged directly into the um, the switcher. Oh, which reminds me, the third reason, and this quite frankly is probably one of the most important reasons that I'm going to be using this, hopefully, instead of the GH4. Every DSLR or mirrorless camera that you pick up, when you plug something into the HDMI out, HDMI out, there is a a slight processing delay. Uh, usually just a matter of frames. And on the GH4, it's about four frames, three and a half to four frame delay, which when you're capturing to a Ninja Assassin or any device, it doesn't matter. And those four, it doesn't matter because your audio is coming through the camera. It's all in sync there. And if your audio is not coming through the camera, let's say that you are recording to a Blackmagic device, uh, I'm sorry, to a, um, a Ninja Assassin, and you're recording your audio separately and piping that into the Assassin as well, the Assassin allows you to slip your audio so you can slip it back into sync. It's, it's designed to do that. Great. The problem, has, the problem with this delay is in live production. Now, what you're seeing, or what I should say not what you're seeing, because you're, what you're seeing is going through a whole streaming thing, but what's hitting the switcher is four frames delayed from real time, which doesn't seem like a problem unless I route my audio to the switcher separately. Then I have a four frame sync slip between audio and video, which you will see, you can tell that. And on some of my earlier productions or if, I'm, if I've been messing around with things, you may have noticed a very slight delay. I can fix that in post, but I can't fix it in live. The solution to that is to route my audio through the camera, which is what I'm doing now. But then this audio and video are on delay and it then gets out of sync with other things. So it's, it's a whole complicated mess and it's a mess that I really, really want to fix. This is supposed to fix it. Now I've talked to Blackmagic Designs tech support extensively about this and they have gone as far as taking devices off the shelf, setting up, building my configuration in their offices with a, uh, the ATEM switcher and this camera running audio into the switcher directly, running video from this and checking sync. And they assure me that there is no sync slip, that this is feeding out over the SDI real time, not a frame delayed real time. So hopefully, that is accurate. That is going to be the biggest test of all for this thing. So all that said, I, you know, in my excitement, I almost forgot that that was really the real reason that I was doing this. Uh, anyway, so with all that said, 
There's your camera, micro four thirds sensor. Oh, that's the other thing about this. So this is a, it's micro four thirds, which means all of my Panasonic Lumix lenses will fit on this. Kind of awesome, right? Now there are two Lumix lenses that are powered. There's also two from um, Olympus that are powered. I don't remember the models in those, but that's okay. We're gonna talk about the Lumix ones. So my friends at, at Panasonic loaned me these and these are two power lenses. So this one is a 14 to 42, which is you, if you remember from yesterday's discussion about sensor size and crop factors, that makes us the equivalent of a 28 to 84 millimeter lens, which is very close to the 24 to 70 that I have on here now. So this will be perfect for this studio environment. And it has, again, power. So you can kind of see here, there's a little power rocker on there. There's a motor in here to drive the lens, which means when this is on here, this becomes a camera that I can change the zoom on remotely. So cool. And this lens also has that. Now I wouldn't use this lens in here, it's too tight, but this would be a perfect, if I had a second one of these, this would be a perfect close-up shot because I could actually, again, zoom the lens through my software, pretty awesome. So this lens, also from Panasonic, this is a 45 to 175, so that's 90 to 350 lens. That's uh, that's big, that's a long lens. So that would give me, I have no idea how close it'll focus. We'll find all this out, but uh, that would be pretty cool. So I got those two lenses. Links to all of this are in the show notes. This is again from BNH. Just a quick look over at the Mac. I just wanna show you this device here on the BNH webpage, Blackmagic Design Micro Studio Camera 4K. You see, this is not cheap. It's a $1,300 camera, but if this is what you're doing, this kind of live production, and especially if you're getting it real time, then this is um, uh, this is without question something that, you, um, that you're gonna want to have. I gotta figure this out. Anyway, so that's it. That's a little mini unboxing. You see all the ports on there. This is going to be very, very cool. I cannot wait to get this thing into production to see how it works. I do believe I have to order some cables before I can do this though, because I don't have micro SDI cables that aren't already in use. So I'll get those on order. We'll get this in place and uh, we'll be good to go. Thanks for watching. Again, if you're interested in the product, click on the links below. b &H, uh, has sent these out to me in exchange for me promoting. And hopefully if you guys are going to buy it, buy it with the link there. And that would be awesome. Uh, thank you very much. I guess that's it. And we'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye-bye.